from an update on Comet Leonard to some observing challenges for you to go out and enjoy. Let's take a look at the night sky for September 2021. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. As we move into September, I'm going to take you on a tour of the nighttime sky that'll show you some of the best objects to get out and see or image. We'll be doing this by breaking things down into three categories, the moon, the solar system, and deep sky objects. This will ensure that regardless of your experience level or any equipment that you may or may not own, there'll be something for you to get out to see. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your questions or observing reports in the comment section below. Now, sadly for September, there are no major meteor showers to report, so we're gonna skip right ahead to some of the best views of our closest neighbor, the moon. The moon is one of the best targets to get out and see if you're new to astronomy because it requires absolutely no equipment to go out and enjoy. The phases this month begin on September 6th with the new moon. It'll rise with the sun, meaning that you won't be able to see it in the nighttime sky. Following the new moon, we move on to its first quarter phase on September 13th. It's around this time that you will get the best views of the moon through a pair of binoculars or a telescope. The sun's light comes in at an angle, and the surface really comes alive with mountains and craters showing off their depth. On the night of September 20th, the full moon will rise just as the sun sets, and the last quarter moon follows on September 28th. The moon is one of those targets that spans all experience levels. If you're brand new to astronomy, you can go out and see it with the naked eye and track the phases. And if you're an experienced user with binoculars or even a small telescope, you can get out and see some great detail on its surface. My observing challenge for you all this month in regards to the moon is to go out around the night of September 14th with a pair of binoculars or a telescope and to look for the impressive 600 kilometer long and five kilometer high mountain range known as Montes Apeneus. Let me know in the comment section below if you're able to get out and see or image this target. For those of you interested in astrophotography, I found the best way to image the moon is to take a cell phone and connect it to a telescope to take pictures and video that can be instantly shared with friends or family or later edited and processed to bring out some remarkable details. I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. As we move deeper into space, let's take a look at some of the best views of the planets, asteroids, and comets that make up our solar system. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, which makes it a very difficult target to see, even under the best types of conditions. For this month, it will be visible right after sunset, but will be so close to the horizon that it really isn't a target worth much of your attention. If you do go out to try to hunt it down, please make sure that the sun is fully set before scanning for it with binoculars or a telescope. Venus, on the other hand, is an incredibly bright object that is very easy to see in the southwest sky right after sunset. Of particular interest will be the night of September 9th, when Venus and the moon make a lovely couple in the evening sky right after sunset. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and to observe and possibly even sketch the phase of Venus that it's in on the night that you're looking at it. Come back to it a few weeks later and you may be surprised at how much its size and shape have changed over that amount of time. Our friendly red neighbor Mars is making its way towards the sun from our perspective, giving us virtually no opportunities to observe it this month. Jupiter and Saturn, on the other hand, continue to shine bright as they move higher and higher into the southeast sky throughout the month of September. Go outside around 10 p.m. and look towards the southeast. There you will see these incredibly bright objects rising higher into the sky earlier and earlier throughout the month. 
Don't feel like you have to have a large telescope to get out and enjoy these planets either. I remember the first views of Jupiter and Saturn I saw as a kid back in the early 1990s. It was through a 60 millimeter Tasco refractor telescope that was from a department store. And I still remember how the cloud belts looked on Jupiter and the beautiful rings appeared in Saturn. If you're looking to hunt down Uranus, the best views will be after midnight in the southeast sky where its tiny, faint blue disk can be viewed at high magnifications. For the month of September, the farthest planet out from our sun, Neptune, reaches opposition on September 14th. It's at this time that the Earth moves in between the sun and Neptune, giving us our best position to observe this planet for the whole year. Look for it just to the left of Jupiter, with the best views coming after 11 p.m. in the southeast sky. Even at its closest approach, larger telescopes and high magnifications will be needed to make out any part of the tiny disk of this faraway planet. Now let's move our attention to some asteroids and comets that are going to be good for you to observe this month. The first object we're going to look at is the second largest asteroid in our solar system, 2 Pallas. On September 11th, Earth's going to be in opposition with this object, giving you some of the best opportunities to get out and observe it. Now for asteroids, I found the best thing to do is to go out and track them over several nights. They're just going to appear as pinpoint objects in the nighttime sky, but you're going to want to compare them to the rest of the star field that they're moving in front of. As the deep space sky field stays the same, track your asteroid as it changes position from night to night to night. This shows the incredible speed at which these are moving through our solar system. As we move on to the comets of our solar system, I want to focus this month on an upcoming comet that's hoping to put on a great show for us later this year. And that's C2021A1, better known as Comet Leonard, or as some are calling it, the Christmas Comet. Later this December, we're hoping as this moves into our inner solar system, it becomes an incredible sight through binoculars, telescopes, or maybe even the naked eye. But we'll just have to wait and see. Right now, it's low to the horizon in the early morning sky, moving through the Ursa Major constellation. It's going to be an exceptionally difficult target for September, but we'll be sure to come back to it in October to give an update to make sure it's held together as it moves through the inner parts of our solar system towards the sun. As we leave our solar system, let's focus on the best deep sky objects for the month of September. This month we're going to be focusing entirely on objects that are within our own Milky Way galaxy. And we're going to be comparing two different types of deep sky objects, open clusters and globular clusters. Open clusters are typically made up of a few hundred to a few thousand young stars that form together but have slowly spread apart, giving them an irregular shape. Globular clusters, on the other hand, are made up of hundreds of thousands of older stars and form a spherical shape due to gravity keeping them together. Of the two, open clusters tend to be easier to make out in smaller telescopes and binoculars, where globular clusters can be more washed out by the effects of light pollution. To spot some of these in the night sky, go outside and look towards the south. Start out by exploring some moderately impressive globular clusters, such as M30, M2, and M15. After that, move over to M92, and then set your sights on the great Hercules cluster M13. Now let's go explore some open clusters by making our way over to the northeastern sky. There you will find M103, M52, and M39 each show off their own great representation of the loosely held together beautiful open clusters that they are. Those are just some of the best objects in the night sky this September. 
but I'm most interested in what you're able to get out and see. If you're able to go outside and observe or image anything in our night sky, please be sure to share your experience with us in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.